put the following trig expressions in algebraic form. So my first one is cosine of inverse sine of x over x plus 1. Now notice we're not going to use the checklist here. I'm only going to work with the first quadrant because I'm not told anything about the domain of x. We're not going to worry about moving it around the other quadrants. We're just going to simplify this to an expression in x, assuming we're in the first quadrant. So my first step is to give a name to the expression on the inside. So I'll call it theta, since it'll be an angle. I move the sine inverse to the other side. And then I have a fraction here. We have no idea of knowing what this is an angle unless someone gives us an x. So what we're going to do is just use the right triangle geometry to figure out how to get the other expressions. So sine is going to be given by opposite over hypotenuse. Since I already have a fraction here, I'm just going to assign each of those to each things here, and then we'll just solve for the other side. The opposite is x, the hypotenuse is x plus 1, and then using the Pythagorean theorem, we have hypotenuse squared is the sum of the squares of the two sides, call our unknown side a, and then we notice we wind up with a squared is 2x plus 1, or a is plus minus square root of 2x plus 1. I throw away the minus sign since we're sticking to the first quadrant. So radical 2x plus 1, that gives me all the info I need for this right triangle. And now I just need to find its cosine. Cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's going to give me radical 2x plus 1 over x plus 1. Let's try another. So let's try sine of tan inverse of x. We do our language trick, theta equals tan inverse of x, and then I push the tangent to the other side. Same trick as here. I'm just going to write x as opposite over adjacent. If you're worried about what should go in the bottom, just remember x is equal to x over 1. And now I can fill in a right triangle. So our opposite is x, our adjacent is 1. So the hypotenuse is just going to be the sum of the squares, square root. So we have square root of x squared plus 1 for my hypotenuse. So we want to know the sine of this theta. That's just the opposite over the hypotenuse. So that'll be x over radical x squared plus 1. For a final one, we'll do one using secant and cosecant. So I set the inside equal to theta. I apply my usual language trick. We move secant to the other side. And then we know we're just given x. So I'm going to write x as x over 1. Then I have to figure out what's the formula for secant in terms of the right triangle sides. Well, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and secant is 1 over cosine. So I just want to flip this over to get hypotenuse over adjacent. So our hypotenuse is x, our adjacent is 1. And so I'm going to fill in the triangle this way. My opposite side is going to be square root of x squared minus 1. I square this gives me an x squared, subtract that gives me x squared minus 1, and then I square root to get the length of this side. Okay, now I want the cosecant of theta. For that, we've got to remind ourselves what cosecant is in terms of the right triangle. It's 1 over sine. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so we flip that over, and that gives me hypotenuse over opposite. So putting those in, hypotenuse is x. Opposite is radical x squared minus 1, and that's my cosecant. 